ladies and gentlemen hold on to your wallets because lilith is coming for your money rise of kingdoms just passed two billion dollars worth of revenue and i just want to say you're welcome okay i've spent my fair share in the game I, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed and honestly the two billion dollars that they've gotten in revenue it, it's funny because the value of rise of kingdoms as a game is probably higher than that of the historic famous figures that the game is built around like sure julius caesar and cleopatra were famous they were rich and they were powerful back in the day but two billion dollars like boys that's like running a successful global drug empire because let's be real it pretty much is okay people are addicted to this game and they have been since 2018 raise your hand that's me okay so let's go ahead and break this down we're going to talk about this then we're also going to talk about the future of rise of kingdoms how is the game doing now right because two billion dollars this is lifetime revenue how much money have they made let's say in the last year right because the game's been out for like four years now is it doing well right now is it doing bad right now we're gonna find out here later in the video but let's take a look at this article on gamingonphone.com it says rise of kingdoms is a famous 4x strategy game developed by lilith games where players get to choose from 13 different civilizations and guide them towards their glory rise of kingdoms was first launched in 2018 and as of june 2020 has generated a lifetime revenue of over 2 billion for its global version since its launch it has attracted millions of players and can now be easily said to have a user base as big as another popular mmo rpg game lords mobile the user count of rise of kingdoms is only growing bigger rise of kingdoms seems to be in a golden patch well we'll see about that in just a second okay and looks like they are in no mood to back down apart from reaching the two billion dollar mark in their lifetime revenue the game has also recently crossed a hundred million in downloads in just the past month shows data from app magic the game has generated a whopping 44 million in june itself guys that was last month they generated 44 million and by looking at the game's revenue graph it can be easily estimated that the game roughly generates about 50 million in revenue on a monthly basis yes that is an average month 44 million is not like a great month it's not like oh well they released egypt so there's a bunch of more players playing and spending money no that's like an average month for rise of kingdoms okay now this is rise of kingdoms has become one of the highest grossing mobile games and later in the video we're going to take a look at a list of the highest grossing mobile games and we're going to see just where rise of kingdoms lands because because I can tell you that it's ranked on Wikipedia and the Wikipedia article is actually wrong rise of kingdoms actually generates way more money than Wikipedia realizes one of the reasons for the game's popularity is it's great and extremely functional gameplay along with its plethora of diverse features with which makes it quite a unique game on mobile platforms that's true guys that's true rise of kingdoms and I've been playing it for, since the game came out pretty much September of 2018 uh, they constantly are putting out new updates every few weeks new updates new game modes new kvk formats that's server versus server wars basically if you guys don't play the game and on top of that they have the open field fighting mechanics down to a t there are no other games on mobile in this genre that have open field fighting down as good as rise of kingdom sure there's other games like age of apes for example that have open field movement and that's fine and it's great but rise of kingdoms just does it so much better than everybody else because they basically invented the open field movement mechanics for a mobile game which at the time in 2018 was very ambitious for a mobile game and now if you're a game in this genre and you don't have it sorry rise of kingdoms is probably going to outperform you in the long run the game's all-time cumulative average revenue per game arpu also stands at 19 dollars 56 which is further proof that the game is quite popular and user friendly and that the average amount of money a player spends on this game is a pretty decent amount now guys what this means arpu is average revenue per user so that means on average people are spending $19.56 and I got to tell you guys probably 90% of people who play rise of kingdoms don't spend a single dollar what does that mean that means the whales spend so much money that it's equivalent to a hundred million people spending $19.56 each that is actually insane I, guys I know I know 1956 does not seem like a big number but think about it there's a hundred million users oh I guess that's downloads but still there's all there's millions and millions of people playing this game so this number is wild now let's take a look at the actual data here from app magic now app magic this is a website that basically takes a bunch of different uh, revenue data and download data for pretty much every big mobile game on the on the planet pretty much and it spits out a ton of data points that I find really interesting 
now unfortunately to get access to all the data you have to purchase a premium membership to this website or something like that and it's a few hundred dollars and i'm just not willing to spend that money so at magic if you're watching this video i love what you do if you want to sponsor a video and give me free access or something like that i would really appreciate it thank you but anyway as you can see here in the last 30 days they say that they've grossed over 20 million dollars and we know that in the last 30 days at least in june it was actually 44 million so it's significantly higher than the 20 million mark they also have over a million downloads in the last month alone and guys i think part of this also might be uh, a giant summer marketing push and i know because i've been making content in the mobile gaming industry for a few years now i know that mobile games really amp up their uh, marketing in the summertime why is this because kids in the united states and in other countries where players spend a lot of money they're off from school they have they have nothing to do they're just sitting home playing uh, games on their phone right and so the marketing budget for these mobile games skyrockets in the summertime because the little kids are just sitting there watching youtube videos and they're going to see those ads over and over and over again and then they're going to download rise of kingdoms and spend 20 dollars. so with egypt coming out last month that was pretty much their big marketing event right egypt is a brand new civilization and you saw just some insane really really amazing videos coming out promoting egypt so like the animations that you're seeing here like for thutmose for example or imadip these videos these animations are so high quality they look so good and they're so badass and people who see these for the first First time are going to be like oh my god that game looks actually sick and that's when they're going to go ahead and give it a try and download the game now in the last 30 days it looks like the united states is responsible for about 32 percent of rise of kingdoms revenue which is insane considering lilith games is a chinese developer historically it's been pretty hard for chinese games with a pay to win monetization strategy to break into the united states market but clearly rise of kingdoms has figured out how to do it and is doing it really well almost as well as genshin impact although genshin is still like three or four times higher in revenue generation if not more based on the estimates what's cool about app magic is it actually breaks it down by region here so you can see that tier one east and tier one west is basically the lifetime value of a customer in those regions so here we can see that the west is including the united states uk canada germany france and australia so the average player only spends about 19 dollars 56 cents over the course of their lifetime playing it but if you live in the united states you're more likely to spend about 29 dollars on rise of of kingdoms throughout your lifetime playing it which is crazy but what's even crazier is that if you live in the east the eastern parts of the of the globe of the world the average spend for for a player in those regions is $72.22 which just goes to show that the pay to win strategy for monetizing a game still has yet to be seen in the united states if you think pay to win is bad now with games like diablo immortal coming out there's still about twice as much room for that to grow over the next few years for the united states to catch up with the other countries in the east so if you think games like diablo immortal aren't going to keep coming out in the future because of all the negative backlash you are horribly mistaken we are just getting started ladies and gentlemen pay to win has so much room to grow in the united states and that's actually fucking horrifying holy shit now this website also compares rise of kingdoms to a bunch of games that are similar to it so rise of empires ice and fire i don't know what this game is state of survival zombie war ebony the king's return lords mobile last shelter you've probably heard of some of these games because they are just as aggressive with their marketing but what i find really interesting here is that rise of kingdoms has a higher cumulative average revenue per user than pretty much all of these games which is insane and i don't know what this game is i, I mean apparently it's romance of the three kingdoms true battle i feel like that's probably not true but whatever but besides that game specifically rise of kingdoms has more revenue per user in their lifetime than literally every other competitor oh except for this but this is like this is not doing nearly as much revenue as rise of kingdoms so this is this is actually insane now here wikipedia lists the highest grossing mobile games of all time and this list is uh, let's just be real here for a second it's really hard to pin down the accuracy of this list okay these games don't usually promote how much they are getting per user or how much revenue they've made in their lifetime and also these games are operating in multiple countries around the world and so it's a large and complex data set and there's probably a bunch of like currency exchange rate things that you have to go through to get an accurate uh, amount of revenue but in general okay we take a look for rise of kingdoms here it says rise of kingdoms ranks 45th 
on the most revenue for a mobile game and now this was last uh updated at the end of 2021 i believe and so this is definitely outdated but the problem with this with rise of kingdoms data here is that if you go ahead and take a look at what they have said is their source of this information it's actually a slideshow more like a report from sensor tower which is another website slash company that's very similar to at magic where they take a bunch of data and aggregate it for mobile games and their spending and things like that and you can see down here on slide 14 that rise of kingdoms is the third highest game by worldwide revenue in the sport slash gotcha genre i guess but what they reported here is 926 million but that was actually their revenue from 2021 alone and wikipedia has that listed as their lifetime revenue so whoever put this data in to the wikipedia page uh mistakenly thought that this was their lifetime revenue when here it says that this is their revenue in 2021 i mean boys that's almost a billion dollars in one year the game's been out for almost four years which means like half of their revenue came from 2021 alone that's actually insane rise of kingdoms is popping off okay and that's probably because they've implemented a ton of things in 2021 pretty sure crystal technology came out at the end of 2020 so this was the first year where there was a full year of crystal technology on top of that they have the looser and scrolls they implemented a ton of new uh, commanders in the game they also released vikings last year in 2021 which had a massive marketing push honestly i feel like the vikings marketing push was bigger than the egypt marketing push this year so yeah there was a ton that happened in 2021 so much so that roughly half the game's revenue came from that year that's so crazy now if we take a look at the Google Trends data it's actually kind of shocking to me as someone who's been playing since around here okay this is when I first started playing Rise of Kingdoms which is actually nuts I think of all the content creators I'm pretty sure like Chiskel and Shinchi and maybe Roni I think maybe they started a little bit before me but like holy shit, has it been a wild ride and the thing that I hadn't started posting content until about like here like can you imagine if I had all this extra room this is like an extra like a year that I could have been making content for the game but anyway if we're taking a look at the Google Trends here okay 2021 is where they is the year that they made the most amount of revenue and also the peak of Rise of Kingdoms search data is this year is January of 2022 the end of, of this past January was the most popular that rise of kingdoms has been as far as search goes on Google in its entire lifespan that's right it only came close in 2020 and that's because the entire world was locked down in March the summer of 2020 everyone was inside playing video games so that it makes sense that rise of kingdoms would be explosive in its popularity at that time a year later this is when Vikings came out okay Vikings came out in like uh I think May or June of 2021 and you see this pretty uh big spike here in interest then it drops down over the the course of uh of time and then look at this what the hell happened in in December and in January to just absolutely launch rise of kingdoms into the stratosphere this is a more popular than it was even in 2020 how is that even possible I don't remember what was happening in December and January of 2022 uh where the game would be that popular I mean there was a big marketing push obviously for holiday but there wasn't like there wasn't anything like major and new to the game right I mean is that when sea battles came out there's no way that it was that popular just for sea battles did this game launch in a whole new region at that time I, I really have no idea somebody can comment down below what they think what's their theory as to why the game was the most popular it's ever been at the beginning of this year so yeah rise of kingdoms passing 2 billion in lifetime revenue isn't that surprising to me and if we go back to the Wikipedia article here if we assume that the game has generated 2 billion in revenue which that's what this is highest grossing this is not uh this is not profit okay this is a list of revenue so if we put rise of kingdoms at the 2 billion mark that puts it out on par for the most recent data that we have for candy crush soda saga now again i don't know how accurate this data is here yeah candy crush broke 2 billion in uh in 2019 so this is way out of date here and that's what i mean this list is is not very good but still it's not 45th on the list that is for sure and look at this Fortnite is only at 35 that's actually crazy that's how you 
you know this list is outdated okay but i still i wouldn't be surprised if this game was in the top 25 but damn bitch okay for a mobile strategy game that's actually insane now this is just a screenshot of that app magic data because i'm not about to pay for their premium version or whatever the case is but this is their monthly revenue over time okay so obviously we know that it's 44 and a half million in june of 2022 you can see the spike in in revenue at the end of 2019 right you see the spike here for the uh, holiday season uh, and then the world sort of locks down and then throughout all of 2020 the revenue is just insane right and then it slowly decreases throughout 2021 but this whole year right from december of 2020 to december of 2021 this whole year is roughly higher than it was the previous year which is insane because again if you look the 2021 year as far as search history goes is like in this period right it's in, it's in this period so this is where all the revenue was generated so just because the game isn't being searched a ton doesn't mean there's not a ton of people playing and a ton of people spending money so right now do i think rise of kingdoms is dead do i think rise of kingdoms is dying somehow no okay somehow the answer is a resounding no even though we've seen a pretty substantial dip from the peak in January like again we've seen that the highest spend rates are in this area and that's pretty much where we are right now then this spike right here I'm assuming is because of Egypt right June is when Egypt came out so this spike here is I'm assuming the summer marketing push but holy shit, man I cannot believe how much revenue this game is generating and I mean kudos to you Lilith congratulations that is a huge milestone and I think rise of kingdoms no matter what how you feel about the game right now I think this game is probably going to be around for another couple of years it's probably going to hold strong and again if Lords Mobile is any indication of the staying power of these games uh I just I think that Rise of Kingdoms is going to perform as good and as long as Lords Mobile if not longer so we'll, we'll we'll be optimistic here for just a moment and we'll congratulate Lilith for this incredible milestone for a game that honestly I love I love Rise of Kingdoms as much as you know sometimes I do complain about the game I really do love the game the art style and of course the community is the reason that people play this game stick around and spend money now I was thinking about making a video talking about why people like pay to win games uh and I feel like I'm sort of an authority on that because I've been making these game these videos about a pay to win game for years now so if you guys are interested in that type of video sort of a more general mobile game discussion let me know in the comments section below while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe for more and I will talk to you guys again soon peace